and this is one of the difficulties in business or one of the pitfalls is there's a temptation if it's not working to push and push harder and push harder whereas actually the trick is to trial and test and adapt and adjust until you get the combination right because when the combination is right it's like the floodgates open and it's very effortless mm -hmm. so success in business is is should feel like you're in flow like it's not because if everything's a struggle it's a sign you're swimming in the wrong direction mm -hmm. it's a sign it's almost like the universe saying you, you're not in going in the right direction so sometimes the best thing you can do is stop swimming and go with the flow Hey, welcome back to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. Today we have a very special guest with us and her name is Rachel Elnor. Rachel is a former BBC TV Dragon's Den Dragon. She is a British entrepreneur who created the multi-million market leading Red Letter Days experience brand. She is now a business speaker, published author, and an award-winning business mentor, co-creator of the digital publishing and marketing platform for Evolutionaries Source TV, and outspoken commentator on the global corporate hostile takeover bid currently underway. In June 2022, she co-created a conscious community who crowdfunded the acquisition of 70 acres of beautiful, magical land at Crestbrookdale in the Peak District. In January 2023, Rachel co-funded the Love Liberation Opportunity Vitality Empowerment Party. Now, I'm so excited to interview this wonderful, wonderful lady let's bring her on hi rachel how are you doing great thanks thanks for inviting me on oh thank you for coming i mean um i met you at the mind body spirit event on uh, a couple of weeks ago actually and it was just i just felt intuitively guided just coming up to say i need to get her on my podcast because you know you you kind of uh, have this aura of like a lot it's like it's like uh, you get kind of get um call to your energy you know like such a humble and elegant oh, and you. yeah so um I, I watched your video back on um you gave a talk on uh, uh abundance of money um okay. so, yeah I watched it back and it was so amazing I've got so many questions to ask you in regards to that cool um so yeah uh thank you so much for coming on um and to just to briefly start off with like can you tell us about who Rachel is and what are you uh about and uh, just a brief, uh, like, information, really, overview of uh, your life so far. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll, I'll try and be brief. Mm -hmm. I mean, my my whole early childhood was growing up above my dad's business, and then I went into accountancy and ended up um, creating my own first business when I was 24 called Red Letter Days, which I took from just nothing, from a, a startup on a shoestring budget, which grew into this multi-million turnover market leading brand. And that had me then winning awards and I got the invitation to be on Dragon's Den. So I was a dragon in the first two series of BBC TV's Dragon's Den, which was an amazing opportunity, which then opened my whole world into being a, a business speaker and an author and a mentor, which kind of opened me onto a spiritual path because I started to get fascinated by what makes one person successful and another person not. And I, I started to realize, you know, it was more about, it was more than just mindset and it uh, it was more about vibration. And ultimately the, the business journey is actually a healing journey. Mm. So it's been very fascinating, but it, it brought me into the whole world of metaphysical wisdom. So I'm very interested in shamanism I'm trained in feng shui. I've done a four-year professional training in trauma healing. I've done a lot of plant medicine work, ayahuasca, particularly in Peru. I've done various spiritual pilgrimages to Peru. So I'm just really fascinated by that whole world of metaphysical and and the the uh, infinite potential behind the the 3D time space reality. Really. 
Yeah, amazing. I, I had a brief chat with you uh, when I saw you at the Mind Body Spirit event about the uh, the 3D and the 5D. And obviously, we're going to be going into that. You know, we'll talk more a bit about that. But I want to I want to ask you, like, uh, it's on a personal level. What was your childhood like? Your upbringing, your surrounding. Yeah, well, I I grew up above my father's shop. And I've got four brothers, three of whom are older than me. So uh, so I had a kind of, uh, firstly, a very strong business training because I was down in my dad's shop the whole time. He ran an electrical retailers and contractors. So it had men going out in vans to rewire people's houses. And uh, so it was, I was just around business the whole time. And I used to do little Christmas gift stands in my dad's stall and um, in my dad's shop, a little st- gift stall so it was a great great introduction to um, business and also having four brothers I kind of became quite good at dealing with men so going into that whole world of business I was able to kind of hold my own Mm. um, at a time when a lot of women were starting to go into business like Anita Roddick and Mm. you know with Body Shop and um you know, all of these things like Sock Shop and Pineapple, Debbie Moore. Mm. There were a lot of female entrepreneurs coming on the scene, like in the ni- late 1970s and 1980s. And I, I was really in that in that kind of world of the Thatcher years and, you know, going back some time now. That was when I started out. So, wow. So I I, I guess like having a house full of men is like you had to tap into your masculine energy right there and then. Well, yeah, and I do. I I do know that a lot of women in business do draw on a lot of masculine energy, and it is quite exhausting. Mm. And there was this sort of real program back then to be as hard as the men and as strong as the men and as powerful as the men. But now I'm more in the metaphysical world, so I I recognize that there is there are other more powerful things that being in your divine feminine and intuition and uh, magic really and I'm talking about white ceremonial magic not black magic yeah um, and so how powerful things like visioning intention affirmations uh, and yeah esoteric wisdom I, I just get how powerful that is mm-hmm. and women are natural creators mm-hmm. you know we are the creators because we have a womb Mm-hmm. So you're activating your sacral chakra to mm-hmm. that center of creativity, the the same energy that creates universes flowing through us. Mm-hmm. So that's quite exciting. I do believe that like from, it's, all, it's a lifelong journey. So we tap into the feminine and the masculine, the feminine, the masculine, the feminine. It's like a race. It's like finding that balance <laughs> for some mm. people is can be challenging. You know, what are the tips that you can give, you know, people who are really masculine, um, their masculine energy, and then they can't tap into that feminine. What, what tips would you give them? Yeah. So, um, Oh, that's a whole subject in itself, isn't it? Because I, I'm one of the things that I found that when I started my spiritual journey, I kind of swung from this quite masculine business energy right the way into this sort of Mary Magdalene kind of divine feminine wanting to be a goddess. And I kind of made that masculine side of me wrong. Mm. And so these days, I'm much, I think I like would like to feel I'm much more of a balance of receptivity and particularly slowing down meditation daydreaming but but combined with uh when I get to that zero point and I get inspiration decisive action mm-hmm. so it's a really beautiful combination mm-hmm. of um yeah of the balance of that feminine re- receptivity receiving infinite divine guidance really Mm -hmm. so that when you move to action you're moving from a zero point place of infinite wisdom as opposed to the ego trying to work it all out Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and that's much more powerful Mm -hmm. when you can be on the wave of that energy yeah and I guess it's like um for some people is masculine is go 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 and for others is uh suppression a huge suppression of emotions because we know feminine is about expression the emotions Mm. the creativity 
Um, and I think like it just were, kind of reminds me of my journey uh, where I've been through quite a lot of um, trauma, adversity from early on in my life to to really numbing and uh, suppressing a lot of my emotions and I was in yeah. very heavy like masculine energy and that wasn't an energy of me out in the world doing things because for 10 years I was suffering from extreme anxiety to a point I could not even leave the house okay. um, so when I had my spiritual awakening that's when I really tapped into my feminine where it, it just it just like a Pandora box opened up of emotions I couldn't at first it was like oh I can't handle it but then now it's like doing a lot of trauma work in uh -huh. it it's 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 perfect it's absolutely perfect because now I can tap in the masculine they doing the doing and also uh, allowing the feminine in as well. You know, mm. it's, it's about doing that work, that trauma work on yourself as well. Because it, yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people do try to only. This is this this one of the. I think one of the traps of the secret and the Esther mm -hmm. Hicks law of attraction is only wanting the love and light, and not embracing the shadow because when that comes up it's very easy if you follow that there's just like oh, try and get rid of that and only focus on the love and light but I I think it an honoring because I my I don't know about you but my energy certainly goes in like flow so mm -hmm. some days I will wake up and I'll feel very high vibration mm. and very clear and energized and other days for whatever reason I will feel quite like low or like grief or my, grief might be coming up or just a deep sadness or despair mm -hmm. and I think it's really important to just allow all of those that I think there's a roomy poem isn't there about all visitors are welcome yes all visitors <laughs> yes. to the guest house are welcome and yeah. come in and, and listen mm -hmm. you know it's like if your body if you're getting ill uh listen to what your body's trying to tell you mm -hmm. rather than try and get rid of pain yeah it's so true because when I used to have uh panic attacks used to have them two three times a day and it was like now looking back it's just my body way of saying there's something that you need to look at yes. ring 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 it's all that trauma that you're suppressing I want to come out I want to come out yes that's yeah. exactly it and so of course if we don't look into the shadow then it just gets projected out there and we manifest it in externals and mm -hmm. then we try and make them wrong and push them away and rearrange the externals mm -hmm. as opposed to saying oh thank you for showing up and and reminding me of this thing that I haven't quite yet dealt with yeah yeah so like and then and then in that place everything becomes a gift mm -hmm. absolutely completely yeah. agree completely agree um so um now let's talk about um the red letter days um sorry the red letter days yeah it is <laughs> yeah yes. um you started that off from basically nothing um to it went big right so mm. can you tell us about that how what was that process and was it really hard starting a business <laughs> yeah I mean when I went into business, I thought it would just be really easy. And of course, I started in 1989. So this was before the internet, um, before even mobile phones. So I really am an analog entrepreneur in a digital era right now. So I, I had a classic business sort of background. And it was a mail order company, Red Letter Days, essentially. So we were creating a brochure of experiences and we were sending this brochure out. And then people were ordering. And it took a good... 18 months for that business to take off and it was very soul destroying at the beginning and I I totally get I mean two-thirds of all businesses fail in their first uh, yeah. 12 to 18 months yeah. and I can totally understand why because it's it is difficult um and challenging to get that momentum and quite easy it's quite easy for most people's energy is like a firework it's quite explosive but then it tails off and the good thing about me that I've noticed about me is I'm quite a good marathon runner. So <laughs> I never keep give going up. for Great. a long, yeah. long time. And that's it. And and never giving up. And instead of, and this is one of the difficulties in business or one of the pitfalls is there's a temptation if it's not working to push and push harder and push harder. 
Whereas actually the trick is to trial and test and adapt and adjust until you get the combination right. Because when the combination is right, it's like the floodgates open and it's very effortless. Mm -hmm. So success in business is, is should feel like you're in flow. Like it's not, because if everything's a struggle, it's a sign you're swimming in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. It's a sign. It's almost like the universe saying, you, you're not in going in the right direction so sometimes the best thing you can do is stop swimming and go with the flow mm -hmm. and using a lot of prayer I mean that I I have to say even back then when I wasn't really spiritually aware I instinctively was like god help me you know mm -hmm. and I did get some a big turning point was getting an amazing helper a marketeer uh, who really took me under his wing and taught me about how to do good marketing and that was that was a re real key turning point mm. yeah to get um, some good marketing advice because most people's marketing is pretty hopeless I have to say yeah um so like if people are starting out and they are really struggling and they don't have the budget for it as well what can they do yeah so as I said the first thing is to stop swimming uh, in the wrong direction <laughs> yeah if you're struggling is to stop swimming and yeah. start doing the inner work I would say oh yes because it uh, the inner world is like the reflection of outside so it reflects yeah. on the outside um, yeah and also so, I yeah go on. oh shall I just complete on that so yeah yeah it's quite interesting because I've recently been watching a lot of ne Neville Neville Goddard who's a bit like an Alan Watts a speaker in the 20 20th century speaker He's been fascinating and I've been sort of switched on to him and listening to him for the first time. I can't believe I wasn't aware of him before. But he talks about imagination, the, the, the Christ within is imagination. Mm. So there's tremendous power in imagining what you do want and visioning that and creating that in some way, whether it's journaling or creating a vision board. Mm -hmm. And I, I've had amazing results with vision boards in my life of mm -hmm. just they help you to really focus on what, what you do want to create. Because the more you focus on what you do want rather than fighting what you don't, keeping visioning, keeping energizing that, giving it as much color and using your imagination. Um, and then magic starts to show up. Mm -hmm. So it, like with me and this amazing helper, mm -hmm. uh, you know, asking for help. Mm. um was a massive thing because most people are in ego and they they don't they don't want to admit that uh it's not going so well so a very big important thing is to ask for help I, i'm mm. struggling please help me mm -hmm. and that can be a prayer or going going to a business networking and trusting that you're going to sit down next to the perfect person who can help you mm -hmm. and also think um when you're in your passion the thing that you love doing the most mm. um I think you can uh, really um universe just aligns these opportunities with you yes. you know like you said like if you're going against current you're going against the flow mm. that's not where you need to be you know while doing the inner work I feel like it's like um I, I normally when I give talks and I talk about um uh, trauma work as in trash can inside of you and each time something yeah. happens in your life that's like a rotten tomato it's going okay. in it's going in and you walk around with it and what yeah. happens is slightly like changes your personality where it plays out in your relationships it plays everywhere right in your health yeah and when doing the inner work purging those those uh, purging it out healing it dealing with it um mm. what happens is like when you keep getting it out it's like it gives the p opportunity for new energy, new frequency, new vibration to come come to you. And it yeah. happens. And then you find your passion within doing the work. Yeah, yeah. Because this is the thing. It's like you're either on an energetic level and can feel it in your body or either in a contraction or you're in an expansion. And mm -hmm. so when you're fearful and the money's running out and you can't see a way through and nothing's working, you're in a contraction and that's not actually very attractive and you start to kind of get desperate and needy and grabbing mm -hmm. at externals. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you get to that place of re like, as you say, get, getting back in touch with your passion and visioning and imagining possibilities and like being in the energy of success. And I mean that in the wider sense of the word, 
-hmm. not just money, but just being in this place of like doing what you love and creating amazing value in the world. It's very attractive Mm -hmm. to money and opportunities and clients and possibilities. Yeah. So it's moving from contraction of fear to expansion of love, really, if you want to put it simply. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I was just literally having a chat with um, someone I was interviewing earlier about abundance, reaching that level of abundance. And and I was say, saying it's so crazy, like I been away from my passion for about a year and a half and, and I got back into it. And this is where I belong. I belong on stage. I belong on, um, you know, just interviewing people like you, just incredible insights and wisdom. Um, and what universe is doing now is like just landing me people who are would wouldn't even be at my reach, you know. But mm. she said what she said one thing is because it doesn't matter whether you're high or not, you're energetically there with them. And mm. that was really it really hit because it was like, okay, who am I? I was thinking, who am I? Who am I to interview Rachel? Who am I to interview this other person who's coming in big influence? It's like, who am I? And she said, no, it doesn't matter about the material and the physical aspects or how many followers you have or how many this, mm. you're energetically there because yeah. you already see it. You yes. already have it before you have it. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Um. Oh, my God, this is amazing. Um. So um, let's talk about Dragon's Den. So you had uh, this company that's doing amazingly well, you know, this brand doing amazingly well. You get uh, contacted by, um, you know, being to be on Dragon's Den. So, what was the process with that, and how was it? How was it? How was the experience of Dragon's Den? Well, it was quite an interesting thing about uh, Dragon's Den how it manifested because it was. I, this was back in the sort of early two thousands, and I remember this is before the BBC approached me. I remember saying to my marketing man because it was at the time of all these reality shows like Ground Force and Changing Rooms. And I said to my marketing manager, I said, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure that, that I'm, I'm being called to be on television and that, you know, is, is I, I just kind of be, I had this feeling about it. And um, he actually got in a, a, the PR company and a specialist guy in TV. And I remember this guy saying at this meeting, do you know how difficult it is to get into television? <laughs> and I said, Look, well, no, I, I don't actually. Is it difficult? I've I've never done it before. I don't know. He said, oh, yeah, we're going to have to do a show reel and a da 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 da. And I said, look, look, I'm really busy at the moment. So let's just park it because if it's really difficult and I'm going to have to go to all this trouble, then let's forget it. And literally within like within a couple of weeks, um, one of my marketing team came in and said, we've just had an email from the BBC. They're doing a new show called Dragon's Den. Would you like, they want to know if you want to be on it? And I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a beautiful manifestation. Uh, and so, so yeah, yeah. yeah. And because and it was a new concept for the BBC uh, for that first series. So it was really wonderful to be part of the creation Mm-hmm. of the formula because then that formula was I think they're on there I don't know probably 20th series by now and it also was syndicated worldwide so a lot of countries have got their own version of Dragon's Den mm. so it was really beautiful to be part of the creative process to actually create the 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 creative concept and to be part of the original series to me that was so beautiful and it was it t- changed my life there's no two ways about it I mean, it has been a double-edged sword in some ways but it was an amazing opportunity um so i'm just i'm just thinking that um there's a quote um was it is it who is it by is it alan watts is um uh you you uh universe is the ocean and you're the waves okay. um and it's like it's it kind of just goes back to you starting off at this project and it just had a ripple effect the waves are going worldwide <laughs> you know oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. um so um now from the episodes that I've um I briefly watched Dragon's Den here and there and is it is it really hardcore are they really or how um it sometimes it feels like it's emotionless like you know very cold then uh, about people's you, ideas you see this is one of the challenges because we didn't I don't think any of us realized because uh, we'd never really done TV before, but 95% of what was filmed ended up on the cutting room floor. 
Mm. And the 5% that they edited in were all of the bitchy comments and the nasty. Mm. So all of the nice, supportive, interesting conversations about business and marketing and that was supportive, they the 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 producer director didn't want those they wanted mm. us to be hard and ruthless so they would do tricky little things like we'd be we'd be filming we used to do filming sort of from early 8 a.m to 6 p.m obviously with some breaks and so it and there would be a very hot studio in the summer and and we would get to like sort of quarter to six and there was just we just got time for one more and we're all like oh because <laughs> we like we all yeah. were just exhausted and we wanted to go home so they'd send in someone who was really annoying with a really crap thing and just because they wanted to get the those that comment like mm. I hate it mm. or like we were trying to get rid of them because we wanted to you know yeah. we wanted to get out of the studio and the, and the producer's like, thank you very much. That's the bit from today that we'll use. So all the previous eight hours didn't weren't used, but just that those little nasty, okay. you know. So it's very very edited. Mm. And so the one of the regrets that I have about Dragon's Den is that it created this idea that business is ruthless and unsupportive mm. and cut. Uh, cutthroat and it's just not true the mm. truth of business is most entrepreneurs are very supportive and helpful and if you were approach someone say you were trying to approach someone for money they might not give you investment they might give you some fantastic advice or some leads or some pointers and quite often most businesses they think they need a lot of money but actually for most businesses it's not money that is needed it's usually a deal or a joint yes. venture partner, mm. or a, some piece of, or, or transformation of the product. Mm. So it's not, throwing money at a business is not the way to, to usually to, for a business to thrive. It's mm. getting the product mm -hmm. that is so juicy and so brilliant, so amazing and so, so wow, mm. that people can't help but talk about it, buy it, you know share it mm. show people you know mm. so that's the trick the marketing is actually in the product yeah yeah and do you do you believe that like obviously we're speaking as a global do you believe that um we will get to a point where we will see lightness and will gentleness the feminine energy in the in in media basically do you believe I, that well we'll I think get... it's already happening and I I feel that the heart and soul are coming into every sector. I mean, we've just started the, the love party, liberation, opportunity, vitality, empowerment in the political world. And so, you know, that's a very serious, masculine, mind-based, legal-based mm. uh, world. So we're going in with this love uh, concept and yeah. people are like, no one's ever gonna take you seriously. And we're like, good. We don't want to be taken seriously. We want to we want to bring the heart back into politics. Yes. And I think that's happening in every sector that people are awakening to this false matrix, mm -hmm. this old paradigm, which is crumbling in favor of a real awakening of consciousness. And mm -hmm. every sector, like, for example, health, I mean, people are realizing, you know, good health doesn't come out of a syringe it comes out of healthy eating and nutrition and, and drinking natural living water and it's a vibrational thing mm -hmm. so I, I think every sector is being transformed by this awakening of consciousness and mm -hmm. it's a very exciting time oh, to absolutely. be incarnated you know yeah it's like um it's like for years on end we were in masculine energy from my understanding and then now um we are really truly moving into age of um also age of aquarius and also um feminine energy so i could see you could see the unhealthy masculine that's like in the world right now ruling the world mm. they they there's some things going to happen where they they will just kind of just kind of crumble I, I would I would assume yeah well this is an interesting thing because the unevolved masculine which is all about puny, uh, power money control mm -hmm. uh, there is an awakening you know the evolved masculine which is much more um 
like Alex. a loving loving father really i mm. i could describe it so so i men uh, a lot of men are awakening and i i know that that's happening through plant medicine particularly ayahuasca mm-hmm. i've seen that um <clears throat> people coming to medicine work who are maybe uh maybe they've been in prison or they've been a drug addict or something or they've been quite hard and heartless and ruthless and quite unevolved masculine energy mm. they'll come to the medicine and and do a whole ceremony mm. and emerge with like with the softness and their heart open and like tear healing tears of and it's just like the softness that comes that that vulnerability that is that can be beautiful i feel like in our community there's a lot of um masculines really tapping into their femininity um mm. and you can tell the difference like you see the business side of the world where they're very hardcore and um, emotionless and they're just just doing, doing, doing autopilot where mm. when you tap into the um, masculines in the community, it's, it's beautiful to see because they, they've they been actively working on themselves. They have like men's circle coming in now and mm. um, a, a lot of emotions. They can articulate emotions, which is amazing. And then also out there in the world doing, doing, doing. And, and I think that is the energy, what you're talking about. This is where we're heading towards. Um, feminine is coming into a balance and masculine are both uh, coming into balance. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And as as you said, it's the evolved the evolved masculine and the evolved feminine because mm-hmm. obviously the feminine can be in the in the old era can mm-hmm. often be a victim, powerless, mm-hmm. depressed. Mm-hmm. Under so there can be this persecutor victim dynamic between mm-hmm. the masculine and feminine. Mm-hmm. But I think this this awakening of consciousness where women are stepping into their power but not in a masculine way but Mm. moving out of victim consciousness and realizing that they are the creators of their uh their entire world Mm -hmm. and how the how you know the thing as i said things like law of attraction and visioning and intention and how it is possible to transform the externals of your life if you do the inner work you know Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. and that's very empowering. Like when you take responsibility for everything in your life. in your life, oh, it's that I yes. manifested it all, and even the bits I hate. But it's yes. like, uh, as my teacher Joel says, it's like a, a dis- discarded husk of old behaviors and beliefs. Mm. So that can be changed, and then to you as you do the inner work, the, all of the externals start to miraculously transform. It's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I'd completely agree. And um, I think it's just, um, I'm, I'm loving this conversation. Um, have you heard of a spiral dynamics? Um, so it's basically a, a spiral dynamics where you start off with the red, the beige energy, what is the survival, then you go oh. red, which is the like very, it's like very aggressive anger, narcissistic kind of energy. And then you yeah. move up to the blue energy, which is where I think the religions and um, politics and um, like um, good, yeah, good and bad thinking starts off and then you go up to uh, orange energy which is very uh, business oriented and it's very much go 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 do 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 money money materialism and uh, pop Mm -hmm. culture and then you move on to green energy which is more heart-based energy Mm. um, which is very um, doing the inner work good with emotions and I think that is the human evolution so you start off with beige when you your your survival basically when you're a child and you move up Mm. uh, the teenage years and your 20s and 30s and 40s Um, and I think like a lot of the world is moving towards these awakenings, especially during pandemic. We had quite a, it was like, uh, like a, a two different title um, uh, dynamics playing out where people were actually going in and actually realizing a lot of stuff. They had, they were going through their awakenings, their inner awakenings. And then we also had the other people who weren't good at that, sitting at that, but they were, they were, uh, they were breaking down you know, Mm -hmm. um, and it just shows that there's a line between the orange and the green energy where like you have an opportunity to move, keep pushing and evolving. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is where our 
I feel like the community, the spiritual community is at, they're doing their work in the green energy. And, but it's like, it's like, how do you, how do you do that work and get into the hardcore world of like orange energy? Cause it's all, it's all great. You know, um, how do you, um, that kind of just leads me to that question of, um, like the, the corporate world and the spiritual world, how do you find that balance and what is happening there? Mm. So I think it's important to, to say that there, and this is my observation is that there is, um, there is a locking down of the false matrix. Mm. So there are the power, there are powers that want people to be uh, under the control of the system and there's a lot of fear that is mm-hmm. generated by the system and through money and debt slavery so we're in a system that this false matrix which has been created for us which is like a program which where where we have been programmed with limiting beliefs and you know all of these phrases from your childhood mm-hmm. like money doesn't grow on trees and you can't mm-hmm. make money doing what you love so we're in a program which is not empowering Mm -hmm. and so I think uninstalling those programs and recognizing where they're running and where they're playing out is really important and so this journey from the mind and everything trying to work it all out into the heart and being in connection with the power that creates universes that is a very different energy energetic place to be where you're not just trying to work it all out and struggling on your own Mm. you you're dropped into the heart you've got into alignment with the zero point Mm -hmm. and now you're working with that divine infinite intelligence and um to me that's what makes all the difference so that move from mind into heart i think is really key Mm -hmm. to transforming everything yeah i completely agree and um you just touched upon money. That was my next question, <laughs> divinely guided. So um, now let's talk about our relationship with money. Um, how do we align ourselves with abundance? Mm-hmm. Well, there's a big difference, of course, between money and abundance because mm-hmm. abundance in its truest form is nature mm-hmm. and, you know, water and food and fruits and foraging and this so it's been quite interesting for me because I'm I'm doing this um this 88 day paradise program and um part of that because there's lots of juicing in it um I I've been foraging mm-hmm. and it's just when you start to walk the land and you're just okay you're just looking for dandelion leaves and um cleavers which are the sticky willy plants and uh nettles Nettles. and suddenly you're seeing that like the fields are full of these amazing green plants whereas normally you might be going to the supermarket and buying some kale for example Mm -hmm. and you just get a sense of the abundance that there is in nature and and i go to the buxton spring and get my water now natural living water from the buxton spring and it's the lion's head at Buxton. And it literally flows the whole time consistently. And it has done for hundreds of years, regardless of rainfall or the weather or the whether it's summer or winter, it's constantly flowing and it's beautifully warm because it's coming from deep underground. And it really is such a reminder of, of abundance that this water is just never stops flowing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and tourists come and say where's the tap you know how do I turn the tap off like no it just flows the whole time so when you start getting in touch with nature's abundance and you really really tune into that Lakshmi kind of the empress in the in the tarot the abundance of nature because the truth is that scarcity is a mind program and it's it scarcity thinking scarcity mindset has been embedded in us by capitalism Mm -hmm. because because capitalism needs scarcity needs the concept of scarcity there's not enough but when you start tuning into nature and you start realizing that one seed creates hundreds of seeds i mean lots of people are are, are putting money into seed banks now as a new currency Mm. so one sunflower seed uh one non-monsanto sunflower seed 
you know, can create three or 400 seeds, which if you planted all of those, you get then 10,000 seeds by the next harvest. So, and then you get to a million, like it doesn't take many years to get to a million sunflowers. Mm -hmm. So nature's abundance, once, once we tap into that and realize scarcity is just a program in the false matrix. Mm -hmm. And so this whole monetary system, which is essentially, they've just been printing money. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it doesn't actually exist money. Yeah. It's energy. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but be, beyond that, it is part of the program which keeps us in fear and in the, the place of duality and has created a lot of debt slavery for many people. So, I think it's important to realize that there has been a manipulation of money. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that you can't flow money. But it's just an awareness that uh, there's a lot of fear around mm -hmm. money and there's a lot of scarcity around money. Mm. So noticing that contraction, that contraction of fear, oh, my God, I can't pay the bills. And if moving from that place of there's not enough into plenty, mm -hmm. okay, can I, can I really be in the energy of abundance? So just the breath. Okay, just breathing. There's plenty of air to breathe in and out. There's plenty of water just flowing naturally. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of food to forage. And so tuning into abundance, it's a kind of mindset. It's an expansive mindset thing, mm -hmm. which is a kind of antidote because we are, we are, and scarcity is something which is, we're really being squeezed by the system. Mm -hmm. Like with energy bills is insane. You know, like my energy bills have gone from like 300 pounds a month to 750 pounds, like in yeah. a year. Yeah. And I, so I just think, God, there must be a lot of people who are really struggling right now. Food prices are going through the roof mm -hmm. and it's like we're being squeezed mm -hmm. into this place of scarcity. And I think it's being done deliberately. So once you have an awareness of that, then uh, you realize that there's, there is manipulation around money, which mm -hmm. we're being we're we're being faced with right now mm, it's like the basic needs of human isn't it and that's being taken away yeah and there is a bigger agenda but i don't know if we even want to go there but i could talk on that if you want but well, it's up to you so go for it <laughs> well my my observation on it is that there there is an agenda for much greater command and control through digital technologies like digital IDs. And I think part of that will be, well, we know they've already announced it, central bank digital currencies. Mm -hmm. And my feeling is that the, this scarcity of the squeezing through ever higher prices and energy prices, petrol prices, everything's going through the roof and people are struggling that it will get to a point where our benevolent government then says, I know to help everyone and keep you all safe. Mm -hmm. Let's give everyone a universal basic income mm. to make life easier. Won't that be wonderful? But just a few conditions to this universal basic income to get it. You need to have digital ID. You need to be compliant. You need to have your jabs when you're told to mm. your, you need to have your social credit score is up. So if you publish any, if you speak out against the government, you lose a bit of your score. If you don't, if you go somewhere where you're not allowed to because of climate change, you're going to lose a few points and, and then you won't be able to travel and you won't be able to get on a, on a train. And that's exactly what China have, has already got in place, a social credit scoring system. And that is a very dangerous route for us all. So I know a lot mm. of people are speaking up and, and uh, say, speaking up and standing up mm. prote protesting mm. against things like 15 minute cities and the whole digital id thing that they tried to push in with the covid mm -hmm. there's a i think there's a big pushback on that from people who are awake to the bigger agenda mm. so mm. we need to be very mindful that uh, there is this uh, program afoot yeah, they. Uh, what I was talking about the spiral drama, the red energy that's like below all the um, yeah, it's like kind trying of to really take back. us down into yeah, base chakra yeah, because that's yeah. the thing about awakening of consciousness is that you're getting into like in, in I think a bit when you get to the heart and you're speaking your truth through the throat chakra, you're opening your in, your third eye intuition, mm -hmm. you're opening your crown chakra chakra to source. That awakening of consciousness mm 
Mm. It's like, oh my God, that's quite dangerous Mm -hmm. because once you're awakened and enlightened, that's quite a challenge for the authorities. Mm -hmm. So how can they bring people's vibration down? Well, the easiest way is to squeeze the the money and bring you back into that base chakra of how am I going to feed my kids? How am I going to keep a roof over my head? How am I going to keep warm? Mm. All of these things, Mm. you know, how am I going to travel? How am I going to live? Mm. And so Mm. when you're worried about base chakra needs, you're not in that place of enlightenment because your expansion has gone to a contraction Mm -hmm. and you're far easier to trigger into fight flight and be controlled. So Mm. it's just having an awareness of that manipulation, I think Mm. is really important so that we can keep in that expansion expansive place Mm -hmm. of abundance Mm -hmm. and that's why so many people are growing their own vegetables now and Mm. and looking after their base needs getting their base needs covered so they don't need to be in a place of fear it's quite interesting because all the ancient practices the breath work and the yoga and the meditations are coming back as well into into the world Mm. like a lot of everybody's consciousness um, yep. while they wake up you know and I don't think these kind of things would last um, like I don't think these um, it's like um, I don't know if you read a book about uh, with the what's his name conversation with God oh, Neil Donald Walsh. yes it's, it's such an amazing book it's like neither uh, it's good or bad you know there is no good and there's no bad Um you need to have the dark in order for the light to shine and you need to have the light in order to dark Mm -hmm. darkness to be there and I do feel like there's a like a balancing act um everybody has a role to play in this world and Mm -hmm. so some people will play it's like a movie some people will play the baddie role yeah some people will play the goodie role and we all some people are holding the light the healing and doing that work and that's their holiness some people are going out there going against the bad and then they they doing their job it's like it's everybody is I don't know how to describe it because if I describe this to to normal person, they would just think like you've gone mad. Bad is bad, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. But mm-hmm. there's a detachment from it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that book really represents um, the message that's going through that everything is as it is, and everybody's playing their role um, in the world. And whatever dynamics and whatever whichever way it will go. Um, it will go, but then it will. The good will always, like the light, will always shine, even through yeah. the darkness. Yeah, I mean that is the thing, isn't it? You, you can't fight darkness; you just turn on the light. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Mm. Absolutely perfect. Um, I was watching your video about uh, giving and receiving, um, abundance. Um, so you you uh, explained it really well. I don't know if you can remember, like, there is it a fifty pound note? Was give it to you and then coming back to you. Can you explain a bit more about that? Oh, well, uh, you're talking about my talk at the Mind Body Spirit, yes, because yes. because there was a kind of circle of people. Yeah. So I was just kind of basically saying that if if I gave fifty a fifty pound note to the first person and said oh, I'll buy something from you, and then that person bought from the next person. And that person bought from the next person and that person bought from the next person. Like we would have created, if we went around that room, I guess there was about, I don't know, 30 or 40 people there. Yeah. Um, we would have, you know, created uh, 40 times 50, so 2,000 pounds worth of value, but there's only one 50 pound note involved. Mm. So that is a, a, that is a, a sign of flow. So, of course, what happens when there's scarcity or where people get fearful around money is when the £50 note comes to them, it's like, oh, I better save it Mm -hmm. rather than flow it onto the next person. Mm -hmm. And it breaks the chain. Mm -hmm. And so so flowing, so being, and I've compared it to breath. Mm -hmm. So basically, like when you breathe, when Mm -hmm. you breathe in, it's like you've got a full bank account and then... Out. And your bank account's empty, but yeah. you you don't have any problem breathing out because you trust that you'll be able to breathe in mm. again. So if this is to me what mastery is around money, mm. it's when you have the same relationship with money as when your lungs are full, your bank mm. account is full, as when your bank account is empty. Mm. Do you have the same relationship with money mm. as when your when your bank account is full? 
as to when your bank account is empty. Because if you can have that level of trust and faith in flow, mm -hmm. then being able to give away your last five pound note, knowing and trusting that the universe will Bring flow back in, usually, like, especially if you, if you, sometimes you're given a cosmic test. Yeah. <laughs> of like, you're down to your last, whatever, you know, yeah. I've been in that situation. You know, can you just like give it? Mm. Could you just like gift it to someone? Mm. Or like, you know, could mm. I, would you be happy to pay that out mm. and absolutely trust that the universe will reward you? And I've had that happen to me many times. Where yeah. Yeah. It's amazing because yeah. it's like um, also the fear. So I've grown up in a, in a, an environment where money's like, oh, we don't have enough of it. We don't have enough of it. It's like yeah, clinching. It's it's exactly, yeah, exactly what you were talking about. But now it's got to a point where you put that vibration out and you get free, you're like you get free tickets, like free um parking tickets, you get free food and free. And I have a couple of my friends, like that's a bit embarrassing. You you ask, it's like there's nothing wrong in asking, nothing wrong with receiving. Because mm -hmm. they have this mindset as well, like, oh no, we can't. There's a shame in receiving. Yeah. You know, if the universe, if somebody, you walk over to me um, and give me a hundred pound no, and for me to say, no, 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 I can't take that. But that's you giving it to me. I'm gifting yes. it to you. Yeah. It's that's... being okay in that power saying, yes, I'm, I'm okay receiving this. And there's yeah. no shame around it. Yeah. Giving and receiving and, and shame. I mean, I've, I've been through the whole bankruptcy process and that is unbelievably shaming. Mm. to be forced through bankruptcy and I was forced into bankruptcy by I by the inland revenue mm -hmm. and I was absolutely like 100% committed to you know working through everything and just mm -hmm. like and it was just an insane experience but I realized that I had to go through that because mm -hmm. because as a mentor and having been to the the yang side of money and the yin mm -hmm. So like making millions and then going through bankruptcy. So I'd experienced both ends of the money spectrum. And I, I, that that felt very important for me looking back, which is like, you know, 10 years ago now, that felt like a at the time it was like, no, I don't want to go through this. But it was a very, very cathartic, amazing experience in the sense of it. Um, it, I, it I think it did liberate me. It liberated me around that, um, uh, uh, around the kind of facade around money, mm -hmm. you know, having to kind of let it all go mm. and, and it, experience that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like um, if you were, you wouldn't, but if you're coming from this mindset and your level of consciousness and awareness and universe is like, I'm going to put something in, t in front of you and give you a bit of a test and mm. you're going to go through that scenario all over again. Mm. What would your, what, 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 what would you do in that scenario if you had to do it all over again? What are you talking about? The bankruptcy yes. thing? Yes. Yes. Um, well, the thing about the whole bankruptcy thing is I really experienced the, how the matrix works mm -hmm. and how it controls through fear. Mm -hmm. And I, when I look back, it was a watershed year for me. And it was quite interesting because I was, I was actually so angry at the system mm. because they, they say they allow you, you're allowed to make 18,000 pounds, mm. but any more than that, and you'd have to pay it, hand it over, pay it mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. So I was really determined in that year and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a creator. So I'm constantly, you know, creating events and things and programs and all sorts of writing books and whatever, whatever. I've always got sort of things on the go. Mm -hmm. So my mission that year, because I was so angry and my mission was right. I am not going to earn a penny more than 18,000 pounds. So it was really difficult for yeah. me. So I, was, I, but actually what happened and I created my first online program called Business Alchemy and I sold it for just eight pounds, wow, just eight. And I built this huge like database out of this product. So the minute my bankrupt, we, bankruptcy was over, I then went back out to this database and launched a, a new program called Lucky Prosperity Spiral. Mm -hmm. And like oh, everyone signed up to it. And, and then I got like big speaking events for that. I had a big speaking event come in was 7,000 pounds. Wow. It was like, 
immediately that was up it was like the floodgates opened yeah. again yeah. and and all this money came in and it was so it was really interesting going from making money yeah. to absolutely closing that down for a year yeah and being determined not to make any money it was difficult more difficult for me to do that mm. to not make money mm. it's quite interesting because i've i've read somewhere that so many um multimillionaires and billionaires they lose all of their money but from that rock bottom because they already know how to build a business again because mm. they've already done it from that rock bottom they come from a different mindset they go yeah. through their awakening losing it that is their awakening basically yes. you know so they then they turn it into for service for of others rather yeah. than for me 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 yeah 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 absolutely and this is one of the big things is that the best way to if you want to attract money is to start from the place of what can i give mm -hmm. how can i serve how can i create value mm -hmm. how can i create something that people are going to love and it's going to be really useful and amazing Whereas when you go from that place of how can I make money, it's a, almost like a very conditional, uh, like it's energetic, it's like a taking, grabbing kind mm -hmm. of energy. Mm -hmm. But when you come from that creative space of, right, how can I create a, some amazing value, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and fulfill and give other people what they want? It's amazing how much can flow in return. Oh, with yeah. That energy. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my God, that's amazing. This is gold, Rachel. <laughs> I love this interview <laughs> already. It's great. So now let's talk about, you have a Source TV. Um, uh, can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so it was quite interesting because back in 2013, um, I mean, when I became a business mentor and I was opening to my metaphysical journey, I was noticing that more and more of my clients my mentoring clients were therapists and transformational coaches and healers and people in the world of the esoteric world mm -hmm. and so I thought actually what these people need much more than mentoring is some practical support they mm -hmm. need like some operations support of a platform because I just created this online product which would been once I'd created it it mm -hmm. it was like a money-making machine it automatically just once you create an online product, it just sits there just making money all the time and you don't actually have to do anything. Hmm. And it's a very good way of building your tribe. Um, so out of that, Source TV was born and it was very much about the move to short form content and online video programs. Hmm. And we very much, you know, set it up with like, we're going to change the world, we're going to transform the world. But very quickly into that journey, because I, I went into that, new business with my old toolbox of 3d tools mm. to try to put them into a metaphysical business essentially mm -hmm. and I very quickly realized that that I needed to create a whole new set of tools mm. and one of our transformational coaches I remember he said to me he said um this is a personal transformation disguised as a business plan mm. And another another of the te great w wise teachers that was part of Source, she just said to me, if you're going to run a business called Source, you need to go way deeper with your on with your personal journey. Mm. And so I realized that rather than trying to save the world, which is very much in the rescuer mode, mm -hmm. the only person that I could truly save or heal or transform was myself. Yes. And so what it actually did creating source it kind of opened me into the whole world of healing uh transformation alchemy really deepened my metaphysical wisdom led me on the path of shamanism eventually to ayahuasca mm. and kind of on my own journey of enlightenment mm. so it's yeah it was it's been an incredible journey mm. that that source journey mm yeah that's what um about what my next question was actually like you know you've been on this per personal healing journey of your own what was the what was the biggest thing that you've learned from it you know your transformational journey like uh, working with ayahuasca what's your experience like with ayahuasca well yeah I mean I've I've worked a lot with master plant teachers and it is I mean, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, it's drugs or, mm. oh, you, I don't need ayahuasca to, I can do that through meditation, blah, blah, blah. But 
uh, you have to experience it to realize that it's pure magic Mm. and the master plant teachers I mean you're dealing with like like um you're journeying beyond the veil Mm. and um it's deeply healing Mm. so it allows you to face your inner demons in a way that is very difficult to access them otherwise so you're literally purging through some very deep shadow work and then ultimately bursting I well this is how my experience of it you're you're clearing the path and then ultimately bursting through the veil to and where when you're through to the higher dimensional uh like uh when you when you've burst through the veil it's just literally pure pure intelligence mm. just downloads downloads and downloads of just like this pure love light energy of just wisdom and insights it's just incredible amazing experience I would absolutely recommend I mean a lot of people I know some people have challenging journeys but it is challenging work it's hard Mm. work Mm. you know it will it it's almost like it detaches your ego Mm -hmm. you know because your ego is like make it stop you know it kind of detaches that and says right okay we're getting to work and so you have to face things you can't ignore them anymore can't ignore them it's very deep and powerful work Mm -hmm. and i i think it is utterly transformational to do plant medicine it's it's impossible to describe you have to experience it to Mm. to to realize to really get the magic of it it's like wow yeah do you feel that um now this is when i had like my spiritual awakening um apparently when I went to a psyche she goes that you were supposed to have something happen to you in 2012 but it's happening now which was my spiritual awakening but it got delayed because I couldn't handle the energy that was coming in Mm -hmm. so do you feel that sometimes when people taking plant medicines do you think that they go into it sometimes not ready to face it and then that just creates even more of a shadow where they're walking around with a shadow and they don't know what to do with it it's being with the right people as well well the the thing about plant medicine is she when she calls you Mm -hmm. and it's like you do get called Mm -hmm. um and so quite often you will you'll be sort of considering the idea and then you'll meet someone and you'll meet someone else you'll meet someone else like the three things where you get three people echoing the same thing and so so you you get called and it's like it's a benevolent energy Mm. it's it's the grandmother Mm -hmm. and so she's there I she's there to to teach you and to guide you and she will never give you more than you can handle Mm. but she's Mm. also quite a strict mistress like a (laughs) quite a strong grandmother holding energy yeah so she will take you to where you need to go and sometimes that can be very uncomfortable so the key thing to remember with it is trust and surrender Mm. because when the minute you start trying to fight the process that's when people get into challenges where they start where they go into fear and contraction and try and fight and make it stop and the ego comes in and Mm. makes it wrong and and you really have to trust and surrender to it. And the mm. other thing I really recommend if anyone is thinking of doing it is to prepare meticulously because it's very important to do a proper dieta, mm-hmm. to do to eat very clean because you want to be in the vibration of being a plant. So the more plants you can eat uh, rather than heavier density, things like meat or anything toxic like, alcohol or sugar or dairy or anything with a lower density vibration basically um the more you can be light and bright and pure the easier it is to connect and the easier your journey will be i mean i know that from experience having cut corners and like oh it won't matter if just a few days before i have a glass of wine or something you know you feel it like the eye of Ra sees everything (laughs) and quite often you will get a teaching in in the medicine of like you know I I saw you doing that and and you do get rewarded the universe does reward you for discipline and this is 
this word disciple, the disciples, discipline, the universe absolutely rewards discipline and dedication and devotion and being in service. And, Mm. you know, I found that very much is um, dedicating yourself to your spiritual path Mm -hmm. whilst being kind to yourself and not talking about sort of self-flagellation or anything. But there is very definitely a reward to doing the work. Yeah, oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. I think it's like I said, it keeps a, you let go of the old energy and keeps coming back to you and yeah. new doorways start open. I always say that I'm on universe's payroll. Where do you want me, universe? Uh-huh. I want you in schools. I'm going to get pay you to be in schools delivering these workshops. Uh-huh. You're going to go in schools. And I was like, okay, universe. And then where do you want me, universe? I want you to be a motivational speaker. You, I'm going to do this and I'm going to bring <laughs> so many people in your podcast. You're going to do this. It's like being open like to this energy, you know, of service. How can I help people? How can I turn my negative life experiences into something positive, you know, and yeah. be that light? Um, mm. Even if it's a big, short, like however, however you see it. Um, Mm -hmm. it's just beacon of light um so um uh, I wanted to I've got like just two more questions so um in January this year you uh co-founded a love party which you um talked about and Mm. can you tell us about that you know and how can people just get involved in it yeah so um yeah it's kind of pulled into the world of politics but uh we just it really I kind of went into more of a kind of like traditional party and, you know, was probably making too many waves by questioning and Mm -hmm. really realized that, 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 as I said, like this serious world of politics, it's kind of so in the past. So we wanted to do something much higher vibrational. Mm -hmm. And so I got together with two other women, Lynn, Dr. Lynn Irvin and, and Judy Tasker and, we created, yeah, the Love Party, which stands for Liberation, Opportunity, Vitality, Empowerment. And it really is about um, opening up and liberating ourselves from the false matrix, mm-hmm. uh, opportunity in terms of business and enterprise and and moving into expansion in life, vitality being about health and vibration and healthy eating and wellness through uh, through holistic methods rather than what we know uh, the NHS would take us the route that we're being taken down mm. of big pharma route to health mm. Mm. and then um, empowerment there's a lot around common law and standing in our sovereign power and reclaiming our common law right common mm. law rights mm. um, because we don't have to accept this system anymore which keeps us in the vibration of fear so so there's a lot of elements to the love party and we are still in a very early days but we've attracted some amazing people some very high vibration members so if anyone feels like they want to join the website is uh, love-party.co.uk or you can go to vote-love.co.uk both of those will get you to our site yeah and come on board as a member we're going to have a great amazing um annual meeting on the 30th September is the plan. Oh, uh, our first members meeting, like in the round, singing mantras, great speakers, dancing. Oh, can I come, five. please? <laughs> yeah, well, I want to come. <laughs> join, join the love party I'm, and I'm you'll a... be, as a member, it's a bit like a, I mean, you know how the Conservative Party Conference or the Labour Party Conference, they're all kind of boring yeah. <laughs> you know, political things. And ours is going to be, we're hopefully going to do it in nature, oh, in, the, in the round, shamanic style, and sing together around the fire oh, meditation yeah, yeah. And, and to really do it in a in a totally different way oh so, yes yeah it's going to be amazing fun I'm so down and for that we're, we're just at the start of this journey but the general election is happening in 2024 well it might happen earlier but the likelihood there's going to be a general election next year so we have a we've been visioning yes. setting an intention for there's 632 constituencies in Great Britain where we we are registered Mm -hmm. and um, so we're visioning 
632 candidates standing for the Love Party in the 2024 <laughs> general election. Oh. And really just encouraging people just to jump on board and just stand for love. Yeah. Oh, that is that sounds like just oh I mean, this is exactly what we need. This is exactly what we need in the system. Yeah. And yeah. I think it will come it will come through because like like we were talking before, uh the this the old system needs to make its way and people are looking for something new. Mm -hmm. Um and they are searching for they're gonna be voting for something new because like me, I, I, I used to, when I was unconscious, used to oh, vote for this, I vote for that. But then it was like, there's no point. They're all the same. <laughs> They're all Absolutely. the same. Absolutely. Well, and they truly are. They are They are under the influence of the big corporates out of Davos, yeah. these big corporate um, strategies, which are global strategies. And they are not, these parties are no longer acting in the best interests of the people. Mm. And we are very much a voice for the people and the rights of the people and the empowerment of the people yeah um as opposed to this digital global dark satanic mill which is coming our way mm. through total digital control so we're very much as a voice uh, for mm. the people yeah oh, yeah amazing amazing um i actually have like one question and then i have a rapid fire questions for you um i, okay. I love doing the rapid fire it's so great so how would you sum up your amazing life so far yeah, well, it has been an, an incredible adventure. And I have to say that a big part of it, this is a, a little phrase which was taught to me by Moira Bush, who, who was part of Color Mirrors, or she still is part of Color Mirrors. And her phrase is say yes and show up. So <laughs> I'm I'm very good at saying yes to opportunity. And I don't go into the mind and sort of think it through. Like if opportunity comes, I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and showing up, say yes and show up. It's like there's a great movie, The Yes Man with Jim yes. Carrey. I love that movie yeah. where he decides rather than saying, oh, no, I don't think. No, 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 no. He just has to say yes to everything. And it just takes him on this amazing adventure. So I, I'm very much about that. I think because when you set an intention and vision, the universe works in mysterious ways. So pay attention to what shows up and don't judge it. Say mm. yes, yes, mm. yes. And, and go with the flow. And I think that is what I have done with my life. I've, I've just said yes and gone with the flow and I and the universe has delivered some amazing adventures for me and, and oh. it continues to do so. Oh, that's amazing. I'm I'm smiling so much because that's basically me. It's like, yes, yes, yes. I'm to, yes to everything. And it's it's amazing. Um, everything's possible. That's the yes, point. Yes. Everything oh. is possible. Oh my God, that's so amazing. Oh, that's so beautiful. Um, let's get into the rapid fire questions. Um, okay, so uh, what is your definition of God universe? Uh, well, to me, God is love and love is a perfect harmonic resonance. So there's definitely a connection between sound, frequency, energy and God. It's it's perfect har harmony, essentially. Brilliant. Brilliant. What do you think happens when we die? We return to source. That's my experience. I have died in ayahuasca and oh, it's been yeah. the most amazing experience because once you let go and you fully surrender, you you shoot back to source and you are you are back home. And oh, it's just oh like God, we've oh. been made to feel that death is the worst possible thing that can happen. But what if death yeah. was the most amazing thing that could ever happen in your life to you? Mm. Like what if the, you wake the up? Egyptians <laughs> used to do, they used and, to spend their whole life preparing for death. Yeah, yeah, and and the, uh, the quote by um, Alan Watts said the same thing. Is like, what if um, death is when you wake up, basically? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. wake That's up from this dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've experienced that with my uh, spiritual awakening um, when I had the outer body experience. That was like I was an atheist, didn't believe in anything, and when you describe when I was in that place, it's home. This is where I belong. The unconditional mm -hmm. love is. You don't want to come back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You really don't. You're not in this dense energy. Um, okay, so how do you define religion and spirituality? Well, I I do believe that religion is spirituality, which was taken to control the people. Mm -hmm. So, well, I I feel that yeah, we have to be very careful about around religion um, because it yes it is part of the old way of controlling people mm -hmm. very definitely. 
Mm-hmm. Um, what's the lesson that took you the longest to learn? Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> um, oh, that's a very difficult one to answer. The lesson that took me the longest to learn I think it is trust and surrender because I I do have a tendency to be controlling and trying to organize and 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 so just, just surrendering trusting and surrendering in the universe and going with the flow as opposed to trying to make it all happen mm. is a big one for me. It's so weird because on my phone screen I have trust and surrender. Um, yeah. that's a message to me as well. Try you have this if you heard of internal family systems, IFS. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like you have this controlling part to protect mm. us coming mm. in, trying to control it, trust and surrender. So yeah. Do you believe that people with horrible beginnings end up creating the best futures? <laughs> well, horrible beginnings is that like, that's a judgment, isn't it? Because I mean, if I think it takes a, a re- shifting of our realization what life's about because if this is a a journey of enlightenment then sometimes those challenges are what gives us the lessons and the opportunity to reach that enlightenment and Mm. I I know like for myself going through dark times that those are the transformational times so Mm. this judgment that things are bad or difficult Mm-hmm. maybe they're just the greatest gift so seeing yeah. your childhood as a great gift yeah. yeah even if it might have been painful because that's what you're here to heal and trans yeah. transcend yes of course and then you you're grateful for those experiences as well yeah and, but you have the potential to change what's no longer working you know mm-hmm. um um i am in present moment when most in the present moment when I'm walking in nature yes and especially at Crest, Crestbrook Dale which is my amazing land well I, I'm one of the owners of the, the land at Crestbrook Dale which is just like a natural temple mm-hmm. and it's just anytime I need to clear my energy field going into nature but especially there it's especially magical mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah beautiful do you believe oh this is do you believe there is an end to healing um well in truth um everything's perfect Mm -hmm. and beyond the veil which is available all the time it's just perfection Mm. so uh so it's more about transcending the 3d reality which has us judging and believing that it's good bad right wrongs um and so, so you know maybe this is the is the challenge is to move to that place where we can we can love it all mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. beautiful love it the world needs more of what <laughs> love <laughs> so I love party. what the world needs <laughs> now is love sweet love yes. yeah I mean that is the challenge isn't it to be in that it's all very well to have these amazing transcendental experiences of love and perfect harmonic vibration. But the challenge is the integration to actually take that from when you're on your mountaintop or you're in nature or you're in an ayahuasca journey in the Andes. And it's just like amazing to be able to integrate that and to live that going back into the city or dealing with the day-to-day 3d false matrix reality because this is the biggest challenge for us to be able to hold our light Mm. even in the darkness even when we're in the labyrinths because that's what's going to and there's a lot of people shining light in the labyrinths now Mm -hmm. because in in that in that light nothing can hide that's why so much is coming out of the darkness yes yeah absolutely because there's no place for it to hide anymore we're flooding we're flooding the labyrinth with light collectively yeah yeah i absolutely totally agree Um, One last question. If there was someone going through adversity, spiritual awakening or dark night of soul right now, and they're finding it hard to see the light at the end end of the tunnel, Mm. what would you tell them? Um, I remember Neil, I interviewed Neil Donald Walsh and I asked him a similar question. And Ah. he said, and his reply was, fall to your knees and say thank you in gratitude. 
Oh, amazing. And so, uh, and this comes back to trust and surrender mm. and to find the teaching. Because in my experience, in a really, really dark place, when you really sit with it and you be with it and you allow it and you journey with it, you get to a teaching and a prof- when when the teaching comes out of the subconscious into the conscious, mm-hmm. you experience a magical, like alchemical, transformational healing and all the pain goes away when you land the teaching and that happens a lot in ayahuasca mm-hmm. and a lot faster. Mm-hmm. Um, and but you can do it just by sitting you know sometimes it can take some days but when you finally land the reason why you've been forced through this nightmare mm. and you release your resistance to it that the transformation and the healing can be profound so our most challenging experiences are often our most rewarding and transformational oh beautiful beautiful um how can people contact you? And I'm I'm aware that you have books out as well, so you can share that to the audience as well. Yeah, yeah. so my website is rachelelnor.com and I'm currently writing my third book, which is called Liberation, which is coming out later this year. And uh, so you can pre-order, because I'm doing a limited edition hardback version of that, and there's only 1,008 copies. Mm-hmm. So if you want to pre-order one of those, they'll be signed and numbered as a sort of limited edition, um, those are available. You can, if you go to rachelelnor.com, you'll find the link to be able to pre-order those. And yeah, and join the love party. And uh, I have a, a great Telegram channel called Rachel Speaks Out as well, for which is full of interesting content about what's unfolding in the world. So there's lots of ways to get in touch with me. Oh, amazing amazing oh my god thank you so much Rachel for coming on this podcast and I'm sure there's many of our listeners will benefit and learn from you and know all the knowledge and wisdom that you shared with us and thank you so much for coming yeah thanks for inviting me on thank my dear you. Thank, thank you. you lots of love thank you Thank you for listening to this episode. I would absolutely love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been. You can share your thoughts on my Facebook or Instagram, Madhya Sosen. If you would like to listen to this episode, I am on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many, many more. Just search Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosen. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do rate and share this with your family and friends as that will help me out a lot. Thank you so much once again and I will see you in the next episode.